ah, in gentav in gemreig, ah, burda sit my echterod wedi bod, ah, roan du i, ah, a criso vin cartref to wesh, ah, in nar and seisneg, ah, good morning, how's your day, ah, I'm Rowan, and welcome to my spooky house. And I'm going to try and keep this as short as possible because I'm still having some tech issues on my end, especially as far as, like, my current setup for recording videos. But, oh well, shit happens. It'll happen again next year. And, uh, apparently, pfft, all hell broke loose on goth Instagram and kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. No, it didn't involve the kitty. It involved... <sighs> and this time, like, the mainstream normie drama channels got involved, and uh, honestly, uh, I almost want to be optimistic about those who think that if Adore Batbrat had simply apologized for the insensitivity of her tasteless as fuck costume, that this would have all been fine. Or at least, you know, it would not have gotten to the extent that it did, where she doubled down, and then tripled down, and then quadrupled down, and eventually had, you know, like, felt felt the need to um, make her Instagram private, um, so that, like, only her brown nosers, you know, are allowed to, like, view, much less comment on her fucking photos, and honestly, like, I, I kind, like, my gut instinct is to say that, like, maybe those who say that, oh, an apology would have been, you know, it would have, it would not have gotten, like, as scandalous as it became, you know, like, you know, she wouldn't have lost her sponsorships, and we could have, like, gone on, but it's like, you know, like, even if you want to say that, like, oh, well, you know, an apology followed by, you know, a genuine change in words, actions, overall behaviors, you know, but at the same time, it's like, I have, I have known about Adore Baprat since MySpace. Like, we're talking at least 15 years. She's been like this on the internet, and people make excuses for her every time she's like this. Something like this happens involving her approximately every year or two. Maybe it doesn't, you know, obviously, like, this was the final straw for all the companies who, you know, like, were sponsoring her luxury dark alt lifestyle, but, you know, that's the thing. It's like, this was the final straw. This was after... 15 plus years like this is like i said this has been going on since my space with her she is a genuinely terrible person like like, like like she she does something so obnoxious and repugnant that it causes some kind of internet goth scandal about every year or two with her sometimes she'll go as many as three years you know but she never changes. She has never changed. She has been like this for over 15 years. And the fact that it has taken over 15 years for brands and companies and cosmetics lines to finally say enough is enough and sever their ties to her is an embarrassment. Like, this is truly embarrassing that goths have been will and, like, the, you know, people in charge of the various brands associated with the gothic subculture. Like, the fact that it has taken, like, over 15 years for the these companies and these people and people who were nominally friends with her until very recently or who have decided that, you know, their their friendship with her should not come before their 
hopes of starting a business or, you know, like maintaining a business, whatever. The fact that it has taken over 15 years for the final straw is embarrassing. We're supposed to be better than this, right? We're, you know, there, there's a conversation about like what drives people to become interested in the goth subculture. That's another, you know, that that's something I've ranted about here and there. It's something that I've like let out um, hints about my feelings on through various videos. I might make it a bit more concise at a later time, but it's like, you know, yes, there's the whole thing. Well, it's a music based subculture. I'm like, well, yeah, it's the music base, as in, like, that's where we congregate is around the music clubs, like, much like, you know, the, uh, the, the Belle Epoque. Um, I used the wrong accent for French there, but, you know, like the whole, like, cabaret scene around, uh, like, uh, Henri de Toulouse Lautrec, uh, in Paris in the 1880s through early 1910s. All right. You know, like, like that is, that is like how the subculture congregates. This is like where we unite around. And I can very easily make an argument about how the music we listen to reflects our values and personality more easily than a lot of other things we enjoy. Like music is this very universal sort of language, all right? So, you know, we, we come to the goth subculture because we see ourselves set apart enough from mainstream culture that you know this is this is something that brings us to this like and, and we're supposed to be you know if not better than this then at least different enough that we can see the bullshit okay like like you listen to a lot of the formative bands and you see people railing on about the hypocrisies and everything that is fundamentally repugnant enough to make to make the songwriters feel alienated from mainstream society all right so you know you, you hear a lot of this in the foundational music right so i'm not even like going on about like oh well it's on mindset it's like well yeah the mindset is expressed in the music that we listen to and by the musicians that we have become so attached to over the last 40 some years okay and even before that, like, I can argue that, like, you know, like, the goth subculture began with, like, Leonard Cohen, Nico, Velvet Underground, even The Doors. Trust me. Like, all right. But, like I said, like, but the fact that it has taken 15 plus years for the goth subculture to finally be done with Adora Batbrat is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. Okay, and I'm not just saying that because like it it is taken that long for you know the the mainstream drama channels to finally take notice of goth tube drama. Like I really couldn't care less about like what like Repzion, Repzil, whatever. I don't know. I couldn't care less about like you know whether or not like those people you know pay attention to the goth drama but it really is telling it really is telling like i i i don't care and yet i see how it affects us because you know like yes you can also say oh well you know he's pointing out that that like there are hundreds of thousands of people who were clearly upset by her by her thing like even goths were upset by this i'm like yeah okay this is this is true this is true yeah sure he he i haven't even seen the video okay like i'm i'm getting like second hand <laughs> you know i'm getting my info on this second hand cuz it's just like at some point i'm just like on one hand, like I said, like in my day to day life, I couldn't care less. But when I, you know, pan back and see the big picture, I am seeing this wretched example of a human being being spotlighted as an example of the goth subculture. And yeah, yeah, yeah. She goes on like, oh, I'm not a goth. I, I'm like, I'm not a goth. Yeah. I, I'm like, I don't care. I don't care. Like people associate her with the goth subculture. Okay. That's, that's the important part. That's the important part. That is like what kind of like made me leave several angry voicemails to the Maury Povich show in like, you know, from like between 98 and 20 odd two, I believe. So like, 
this is what people see and associate with the subculture. And, you know, like, yeah, like, Black Friday, her little visa marriage, like, she can say it was anything but, but we all saw through that. It's like, yeah, you know, like, she was on German television, and you know, it's like, you know, she's looking all cute and everything. I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, like, it is what it is until you know, like her nonsense just built up, but whatever. But, you know, at the same time, like I said, Adore Baprat has been like this for well over 15 years. She's been like this since MySpace. And she never changes. She has been given every opportunity to change. And she hasn't. Okay? She is dead set on being a wretched excuse of a human being. And people have given her excuse after excuse after excuse. And they say, oh, well, you know, it's very different in Swedish cultures, yeah? And I'm like, no, no, like, that is insulting to the Swedes I have spoken with, like, online and, you know, whose comments I've also, like, observed, like, not directly interact, you know. But yeah, like, there are some, you know, some people I have friends, I am friendly, I am friends with, some people I'm a little bit friendly with, and others I just, like, kind of, like, you know, like, watch and take it all in, but it's like, it's like, no, no, Swedes understand, you know, like, what is racist, and what is sexist, and what is classist, and they understand that, you know, even though it's not exactly the same, you know, between, like, Swedish culture and American culture, they definitely understand because, you know, like, I mean, look at look at the goddamn little, like, maps that people have made about the, um, the, the um, influence of uh, the U.S. intervening, like, either militarily or otherwise, like, on world culture, okay? So... To, 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 like, try and brush this off is like, oh, well, she's a Swede and she doesn't quite, you know, it's a very different culture there. And so it's like, she doesn't quite, you know, like, have the same relation. I'm like, that is bullshit. That is a bullshit insult to every Swedish goth with internet access over the last, like, since MySpace, right? She has been like this the whole time. And the fact that it's taken this long for the various, you know, like, dark alt lifestyle branding to finally say like no no this is enough we're done we're done with you and complete ambivalence to the fact that she is a terrible person like you know like she doesn't change she doesn't want to change okay i mean sure maybe this will finally be the kick in the pants she needs to make some vague attempt at change but i seriously doubt it i seriously doubt it like if she's got like a halfway competent investment portfolio, she has no reason to change, okay? She, whatever, whatever, like, you know, uh, and, and if you're even going to say, oh, well, you know, maybe she she should just, like, make an apology and make a good faith effort to show that she's changed, I'm like, no, no, because at this point, at this point, like I said, this has been well over 15 years. This has been well over 15 years. Like, we are approaching two decades of her being like this, being this horrible wretch of a person okay we're we're coming close to two decades of this she's been given every opportunity to change so like yeah like maybe in two years she'll just she'll come out like you know like all reformed and stuff and i'll just be like no this is at this point at this point like i mean it's one of those things, like, down if you do, down if you don't, right? But, you know, like, say, like, she tries to reinvent herself in two years and be just like, oh, look, I'm not going to, like, do anything offensive ever again, yeah. I'm like, uh, on one hand, I, I really would like to believe that she can eventually change from this point onward. But at the same time, she has been like this for so long and has had so many opportunities to change for the better, I have no reason to believe that it's nothing more than damage control if she makes any attempt at self-improvement after this. Like, she's given us no reason to believe it would be anything but, okay? So if you still, like, kind of want to make that sort of, like, backhanded excuse for her, just like, well, you know, maybe if she just apologizes, makes a good faith effort to be different and change for the better. It's like, I'm like, you're giving her too many excuses. You're just, you're just giving her too many excuses at this point. Like, like, like this is where, like, I think sometimes people can be optimistic to a fault. You know, sometimes I can be, 
Um, I'm sure YouTube does not give the greatest impression of that from me, but it's like, no, like in my day to day life, I can kind of be optimistic to a fault, but I also have a limit. Like I have a limit where like there's reasons I, you know, my younger sister died and, you know, like back in 2017 and we hadn't spoken to each other for for all practical purposes, almost 20 years, okay? Like, there's a reason that junkie ho died. <laughs> Having, like, barely said, you know, anything to me via Facebook Messenger, which, you know, like, I called out at because I called her bluff, and, you know, the little junkie was, you know, lying to me for, like, two hours straight, and just like, no, no, not talking to you, because I have a limit. I have a limit for how much crap I will put up with from people. And like I said, I, I, I had washed my hands of a door bat brat long, like long before I had finally washed my hands of Black Friday. Like Black Friday, she's young enough that I think maybe she still has the potential and it wouldn't be damage control. But on the other hand, I'm just like, you know, I'll, I'll see it when I see it. With Adora Bat Brat, like I said, it is embarrassing that it took people this long to finally accept what a horrible fucking person she is, okay? And, I mean, on the one hand, if you finally accepted that, good for you, but at the same time, it should be a wake-up call that you should be looking for the warning signs before it gets this far again, okay? Like, just wake the fuck up and just acknowledge that she had every opportunity to change over the last 15 plus years, nearly two decades. She's been like this. And this was the last straw for so many people. Really? <laughs> really? This was the last, this is what finally, like, like I said, she has been no different over the last 15 to 20 years. Okay. It, it's been, it's been, over a decade and a half that she's been like this and she's been given every opportunity to change and she didn't and yet people still kept making excuses for her saying oh well you know maybe you should I'm like, like, like insulting every swede <laughs> within with an internet connection <laughs> you're like you know I, I, i'm it's like no 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 this is this is this is it like like if you still had the nerve to be surprised at this point I have to ask what is wrong with your cognitive abilities, okay? Because if this at all surprised you last week, there is something wrong with your cognitive abilities, okay? And you should maybe sit and learn how to think rationally about situations like this. Because like I said, she, she's been like this for well over 15 years. She's been like this... Since my space, this gives me reason to believe she's been like this since long before my space, okay? So, other than that, ah, uh, bats and kisses. I, I, I hope we've learned from this, and I hope you all, you know, the, the, exactly the kind of day you deserve from here on out. Um, as... Always, um, various social media linkage is in the description box down below. Um, feel free to, like, um, leave something through the PayPal tip jar, or if you have more dollars than cents, uh, join my, um, join the ranks of my Patreon supporters, who at this time are, uh, I believe, uh, Karen L., uh, my friend Ali Valkyrie, who is a uh, polytheist uh, blogger and um, social activist who is an American expat living in France, um, as well as my friend uh, Susie Bika. Um, she is a Canadian cartoonist who has worked with Green Party Canada for a couple of pamphlets. And also to my $50 patron, my friend Courtney who is crazy enough to w want me to sing into her voicemail once a month. Uh, so, uh, as always, bats and kisses, wear your sunscreen, and I do love you, even if sometimes I gotta be blunt with you. So, uh, uh, well, goodbye.